Aloha everyone, this is our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for May 8th, 2025. Over the last week, we had the main fountain phase of episode 19 and the full cycle of episode 20 of Kilauea's ongoing summit eruption. So you see on screen here the V2 camera of episode 20, but I'll pull us back to the B1 camera looking over the last week here uh, both day and night cycles that shows us both of those sequences. So starting off here, we had that first uh, pulse of episode 19 that put a flow across the crater floor right there, covering about half the crater floor on the northern side. And then we had the second pulse from episode 20 coming closer to the southern side of the crater floor. And we have ooze up flows occurring in between those two episodes as well, as well as after episode 20 here. So pulling it back, Episode 19. Uh, let's see here. Here's episode 19 from the S1 cam S2 camera. And what you can see is that precursory ooze ups and overflows, and then the main burst of lava coming after that. That same episode 19 from the V2 camera. You see it here, a little bit more zoomed in. What you see is the north vent is the one dominantly active here. There is some activity from the south vent and some overflows, but pretty minor compared to the north vent activity, both in episode 19 and in episode 20, which we'll see episode 20 here from the S2 vent, S2 camera, the south vent putting out a little bit of a flow before main of the, the main north flow overflows and high fountaining event. So that brings us back to the V2 which we started with. And there you can see once again, the north vent overflowing with glow in between, some activity from the south vent, and then the main fountain phase coming in, lasting four and a half hours for episode 20 and lasting about eight hours for episode 19. If we look at our maximum fountain heights, they were both episodes a little bit shorter than previously. Episode 19 came in around 100 meters high or 330 feet at its peak. And episode 20, around 500 feet, uh, 200 meters at its peak. So that's in the same ballpark as our previous ones and higher than our lowest ones we've had recently. If we look at the greater patterns, we had 31 hours of overflows ahead of our shorter than usual fountain phase in episode 20. And we had a shorter than usual pause that preceded this as well. And if we look at this curiosity of the pattern, we've had these cycles of eruptions and pauses that have averaged over 20 episodes, about seven days, such that we've had many of our first overflows occurring on a Monday or a Tuesday and onset of our vigorous fountains, most common on a Tuesday. And we had that again this past week getting back on cycle with episode 20 after being off on episode 19. Our three month tilt at Uekahuna, showing the swelling of the ground in between episodes and then the deflation, depressurization of the ground during the high fountaining phases, showed that same pattern again here for episodes 19 and 20. If you recall, our build up to episode 18 was longer than average and we had a longer than average duration and drop in the ground tilt. And what you can see is that with a shorter than average drop in episode 19, that allowed us less time to repressurize for episode 20, giving us only a three-day pause and leading to this shorter than usual fountaining phase as well at four and a half hours. And along those lines, we're seeing the pressure returning as volcano well, repressurizes for the next episode, presumably episode 21, which the USGS uh, estimates may occur within the next three to six days. Here, here that is right there. So the main hazard is still the VOG and tephra, including Pele's hair that come from the volcano. And fortunately over the past week, we've had dominant trade winds. And so most of this material is being blown to the Southwest, to the uh, communities further away from the volcano um, limiting the impact of this of this emission. If we look at the earthquakes over the last week, they have been fairly low still under the summit and continuing under the south flank, 
and under Pahala, but at average or lower than average rates there. Kilo AS still continues to be in a quasi equilibrium here with more or less the volcano stretching and contracting by equal amounts to maintain an overall level since eruption began in late December 2024. While in the Middle East rift zone at Pu'u'u, we still see contraction of the rift zone, suggesting no activity and no connection to the current eruption in that area closer to people. Here is a map most recently published for the location of these flows with events in the southwest and flowing east across this inner crater floor of Hale Ma'u Ma'u, right there. And on its eastern side, we're starting to see uplift of the ground as well from these pulses of lava injecting under the crust. This is the B1 camera, just over the last week, daytime views. And I'll just zoom it in to some of those foreground areas here where you can see crusts of the crater floor not being covered by flows, which there are some around, but these areas not covered by flows are still swelling up close to the edge of the flow there. So that's a complication that is changing our cycles to some degree here. And that's our summary for Kilauea. Quickly on Mauna Loa, things are very quiet still under the summit with very few earthquakes. In map view and in monthly counts here, continuing a pattern that's typical following the 2022 eruption. But the volcano continues to swell, rising upwards at the summit GPS station, which was a little flatter over the last couple months, shows signs of increasing here again. But in net, you can see from the current time to about one year ago, we've risen on the order of seven centimeters or about three inches or so, even without all those earthquakes and other signals. So certainly magma is coming to the volcano, it's recharging and preparing for its next unrest. And that's our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for this week.